On October 8, 1871, a fire tears through the streets of Chicago, leaving 300 people dead and over a third of the city's population homeless. 250 miles north, in Peshtigo, Wisconsin, a far more deadly fire blazes on. The summer of 1871 was hot and dry. The summer and autumn brought severe drought, and the last time it had rained was well over a month ago. Streams had all but dried up, and any bushes, grass, and trees were practically tinder. One spark would have been enough to send everything up in flames. Let's take a step back and look at the village of Pestigo. Settled a little over 30 years before, the area grew rapidly due to the lumber industry. By the 1870s, Pestigo had grown to a number of 1,700, and the loggers had grown rather lax in their methods leaving the village in a particularly vulnerable position for fires. Ashes from a pipe, a spark from a train engine, or a bullet fired from a gun all had the potential to spell out disaster for Peshtigo. Disaster arrived the night of October 8th. The people of the village were returning home after Sunday Mass when a loud, ominous noise was heard in the southwest direction. Thunderous and machine-like, some thought it sounded like multiple freight trains. And although alarmed, nobody really looked into the noise. That deep into the woods was impossible to see from within the village, and the weather was unseasonably warm, but not severe by any means. Only an hour later, strong winds brought the fire to the town, lighting everything it touched up in flames. It was so fast, people who managed to survive the ordeal described the firestorm as tornado-like, swallowing up 1.2 million acres and leaving ashes and destruction in its wake. Those who lived furthest from the river that split the village in half fared little chance of survival. Well, those who lived near the river attempted to cross, but the winds were so extreme that not even the river could stop the intense blaze, described as a wall of flame a mile high and five miles wide, traveling up to a hundred miles an hour. The cool waters of the Peshtigo River seemed the safest place possible, and people rushed to the banks as quickly as possible. Those who didn't know how to swim either drowned in the water or burned to death on the bank. Those who didn't get to the river perished in the flames. Mothers held young children in the water with only their heads above the surface. Not even there were they safe from the firestorm. Many breathed in flames and died in the river. Others were trampled by livestock who were also fleeing the fire. Reverend Peter Pernan says of the night, I saw nothing but flames. Houses, trees, and the air itself were on fire. When the dust settled, 800 people in Peshtigo lost their lives, with an additional 400 to 700 deaths in the surrounding areas. Piles of charred bodies, many burnt beyond recognition, lined the riverbanks. The majority of the buildings were nothing but ash and rubble. Only two remained standing. Peshtigo would eventually recover. Today, the city of Peshtigo has a population of 3,500 people and still thrives off the lumber industry. The Historical Society has done work to preserve the story of the firestorm, and visitors to the Peshtigo Fire Museum can see both artifacts that were almost destroyed in the fire, as well as living exhibitions that show what life would have looked like in Peshtigo prior to the fire. While the flames aren't as known as other famous fires that happened around the same time, Peshtigo is not soon to forget the deadliest wildfire in our nation's history, one that all but razed their city to the ground. <laughs>